This is Michael J. Coyle from El Temple. I'm here with Zach and Sammy from Gohor. How are you doing, guys? Doing great. Yeah, drunk as shit, dude. <laughs> so you guys played a fucking awesome set tonight at the Sound Control. This is actually uh, the, the, the fastest time you've returned to Manchester. It took a couple of years after the free entry store, didn't it? But uh, you've, been, you've been doing a lot more stuff now, haven't you guys? We're trying to focus on coming back here and build our... Uh uh, how can I say this repertoire here? I guess you could say. Yeah. You know, because I mean, you know, we tour so heavily in the U.S. I see. That yeah. we, you know, we've been kind of, you know, every time we come to Europe, it's kind of weak. Not to say that Europe's weak, but it's just you know people don't understand. People don't know about us. I guess you could say. Yeah, I mean, like over here, it's like a bit of an underground thing somehow. Yeah. So we're trying to uh, break that and make it a mainstream thing, like the U.S. Oh yeah. Yeah, we're so mainstream in the U.S. Yeah, I know, I, I know, Sam, because, um, like I said before, I noticed you guys doing a headline tour, and we didn't get no headline tour, because this is a port, and uh, we need more go whore, you know? We need more go whore. Uh, <laughs> maybe, 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 maybe 2016, we'll see what happens. <coughs> I don't know, I'll hold you to that. <laughs> anyway, um, so how do you feel the show went tonight, personally, for both of you? I thought it was great. Uh... You know, we had a, kind of a clusterfuck of a day, you know, immigration and ferries being late and uh, all that, but, I don't know, just deal with it and get it, get it on, you know? Yeah, I mean, it's just like, you get up there and you do what you do, and there's no fucking bullshit, you know? I mean, it's basically, this is kind of how we do it in the U.S., kind of just throw our shit up there and start fucking playing, you know? Oh, yeah. It's like no sound check, no nothing, just like, fuck it, dude, just go up there and rock. Yeah, you do hard style, you know, just yeah. um, show them you don't need a fucking sound check. You can do it exactly. straight, from, uh, straight from there. I mean, uh, what my daddy told me, you can't kill bad grass. <laughs> so really, I mean, um, yeah, I mean, uh, for, for those listening, really, um, give them a little, um, a little bit of information about what happened there. Uh, something about the ferries, wasn't it? Yeah, well, we were going through, uh, well, actually, this is what really happened. And you want the honest to God truth? Uh, I guess I All right, mortals went in. Uh, the three beautiful women from mortals went in before us, and the guy that was doing immigration was flirting with them for like a fucking hour. So we got f- f- kind of shafted. Missed the fair. We missed the fair because, because the guy was trying to be cute with the mortals girl. And then one of the mortals girls disappears in the bathroom with the immigration. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's a totally different story. Oh, oh, oh. What happened there? <laughs> That's, but that's a, a totally different story. That's a story for another time, I guess. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so really, I mean, um, com- com- compared to last time, how would you compare both Manchester shows? From you, you've played the Sound Control now, uh, what, uh, tw- two times, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And uh, how would you compare both shows? Because now you've played the basement level, which can well, be... The- the, the, the Iron Fury show was fucking sold out, and I was like, God, there like 800 people or something here when we played. And compared to the small intimate thing, which, well, you know, we kind of prefer the small intimate yeah, environment. The, the sounds nice and compact, you know? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, it's cool it's, to it's, shift between the two, you know. It's, it's, it's fun to be able to do both, you know. Hmm. So, uh, off topic, really, um, what would you say has been one of the most, ra- besides the fairy thing, I'm just saying here, what's been the most random thing you guys have actually experienced on tour besides the fairy thing? But that's the most a different random matter, thing? Yeah, yeah like some, something you wouldn't expect, like, you know, something that just pops out at you. Well, that's hard to pinpoint, because random shit happens all day when you do this line of work, shit happens all day like that. You know, it's kind of, it's, it becomes part of the norm to where it's like strange, random things. Things happen all day, so it's kind of you know it becomes things. It's like all right, whatever. You just gotta learn to roll with the punches. Exactly. You know, go with the flow. You know, don't get hung up on anything. Just do your do your job. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's a pretty fucking awesome job as well, I guess. So. I agree. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> So, I mean, since the band started off, um, what would you say has been what, what would you say has been the one thing that's come true from one of your ambitions when you first started off as a band? Like, uh, 
I will answer that very easily. We toured with Celtic Frost in the U.S. for four weeks. And I remember that. I wasn't there. I was yeah, too young, yeah. but I remember hearing about that. Yep, yeah, that was definitely a dream come true. We did a couple of shows with Emperor from Norway. I'm sure you've heard of them. They're pretty good. Well, <laughs> tour with Venom too around that tour with Venom around the same well, time. Yeah, I got I got a bit of everything on me right now. I got a bit yeah. Venom tour was pretty fucking ecstatic. Oh yeah, I, that was I, I, I bet. Uh, the High on Fire tours were pretty monumental. Yeah. Uh, t- too much shit to talk about. Actually, we're a very lucky band as far as that goes. You know, hmm. we have been very fortunate to do what we do with. Who we do it? Did a run with Sam Hain. Uh, that was pretty fucking amazing. Their reunion yeah. shows. Oh yeah, awesome. I remember. I remember. I, I got you guys on Facebook, so I keep on looking at these things. I saw a group. I, saw, I was saying to you last time. I saw a group picture of you, Ben, and also Glenn. Yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was pretty badass. Yeah, Glenn was a very nice guy. That's quite what everybody says about him. No, I've met Glenn before. I, I, I saw Danzig on um, the uh, the Misfits, um, uh, the whole half Danzig, half uh, Misfits show with Doyle. Doyle, yeah. Yeah, yeah and um, he was a really nice guy, down-to-earth dude. You know, he's... I mean, people slag, slag him off just because, um, I guess, in some he way... He has a hot temper. Let's just put it that way. I think he's just passionate about what he does. He wants it to be right. You know? yeah, of course. He's course. done it for so long. It's like... You know, you can't diss him for that. He just wants... He wants shit to be right. Yeah, he wants... I mean, it's Glenn fucking Danzig, dude. Glenn Danzig. I mean, a legend of, among legends. And also known as the Elvis of metal in some yeah, ways. Of course. So, really, I mean, uh, before a show, what's, uh, what do you guys do to prepare? Like, uh, uh, Drink a bunch of beer, some whiskey. Uh, we grab our instruments and try to play as much <laughs> as we can before we can play. Just gotta uh, get the blood flowing after yeah. sitting in a plane or a van all day. You know, yeah, I bet. Feel alive again and get, get up there and do it. Do you guys ever take time to explore the uh, area when you tour? Like, uh, so when we have time, yes, of course. Sometimes you're just too beat and tired to yeah. go do anything, but I, I try I try my best to go take a walk and at least check out the, the immediate surroundings. Yeah, around here, I mean, uh, you wouldn't ask for a better location. you got the Palace Theater, you got everything else, a few historic buildings, you know, and uh, it's pretty cool to see, especially since it's been an unusually nice day, you know, I mean... Yeah, last time we were here, it was like... Pissing it down. Flooding. It was It was cold. <clears throat> cold as shit. Excuse me. Well, it was, it was and it was raining. Yeah, I mean, uh, this time you came around during a very rare moment. The sun is actually showing. The sun was out, yes. Except uh, what before before you guys got here, I was in the uh, the bar over there just having a few drinks because I'm thinking to myself, I gotta wait, I gotta wait. Uh, no, I'm not saying I was waiting for long. <laughs> waiting, waiting for the bad weather to hit. Yeah, you can kind of, <laughs> you can kind of tell because you can see the cloud of doom as... Uh, uh, it was, it was, away, the black clouds are rolling in. It was in the a shape of the Dave cabin. Chandler's <laughs> hair. <Yeah. laughs> so, I mean, how many more days do you have left on this uh, UK run? A lot. We're doing six shows in the UK total and then back to mainland Europe for another, another three weeks. Yeah. Less than three weeks, something like that. Yeah. And then back to the States and resume touring there. So hmm. That's pretty badass. And... Um, I'm, 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 I'm out of curiosity for the uh, for the American run for the for the next show. Is uh, who have you chosen for the support band? We chose Black Breath, Ringworm, and Theories. Uh, any reason why uh, these bands in particular? Because they're not fucking stupid, fucking Americanized, fucking stupid garbage that's coming out of America. Oh, you mean like plastic, like uh, plastic bands? No, the- I mean they don't do breakdowns. Thanks, fuck someone said it. Damn, now, I said it. No, no, I mean, it's, I, I get the same, I, it's, it's the same over here, and uh, in this part of um, the UK, you get a lot of bands that are trying to be like uh, Bring the Horizon or all these breakdown bands, but uh, it's good to actually see bands with originality, I mean, that's why it's always good to see you guys come to the UK, because there's a blast. Yeah, but I mean, you have to understand, you know, Ringworm is like hardcore. Yeah. <laughs> you have Black Breath, which is like fucking Swedish death metal, basically. Oh, yeah. But, but from the U.S., which is that, that America, a hey, Swedish death metal from America. Uh, but black I, metal band from Texas. Yeah, a bla- but Norwegian black metal band from Texas. Oh, but, uh, awesome. And Theory is just like grindcore. But, I mean, we didn't want to do a tour in the U.S. to where it was like a bunch of fucking, you know, contrived, stupid fucking bands, you know. We yeah, wanted to do yeah, some yeah. real shit, you know. Where people actually feel the music they're playing. Oh yeah, it was cool to have like a uh, a choice in the matter too, because we could easily left it up to someone else to 
put on uh, whoever's going to draw the most. But we really wanted to put something together where, with shit we enjoy. Because if we're on the road for a month with somebody, we want to enjoy the music too. You know what I mean? So. Well, and this as well with, the, with what you said. There's also a few different elements. I mean, you guys are a black and fresh, black and death element band. You got yeah, whatever they want to call us nowadays. And yeah, I mean, it's hard. It's, it's hard to pick because you guys have got fresh and death and black metal all in there. You got some fresh speed. You got some death growls and black metal um, atmospheres. You know. I mean, but uh, I've noticed with this, uh, what you said with these uh, the bands supporting in the U.S. You got like a hardcore, grindcore, a Swedish death metal, and you got you guys, which all ties together into a nice little package, which sounds pretty fucking cool. Which it should be, you know. Yeah, I mean, um, I mean, um, uh, when are when is this uh, tour happening? If me, uh, it starts July, no June fourth, and runs through mid July. I wish I could go. It's about six weeks, all U.S. and Canada. So I wish I could go because I know it's at one of the dates. I believe is in Florida. Am I right? Uh, uh, we only doing one show in Florida. Doing, I believe uh, we have benefit for like a military no, benefit. No, two from, shows uh, in Florida, in actually. Tampa, and then a show in Miami. But that's not with the whole. Package. That's not on the tour package. That's, yeah, that's some individual shows that we booked on our own. And uh, what are they about, uh, if I may ask? Uh, well, some the, good friend of ours. They have a. Um, they set up the show every year for veterans and uh, people who are in the military to raise money for them. And yeah. They're involved that. with the Metal Meow Alicia. I don't know if a lot of people know about the Metal I, I know Meow, they Meow are. I used to see Which Carrie King They're like a stuff cat on. rescue fucking thing. <laughs> and <laughs> I fully support that. Yeah. Because I love cats. But, you know. Who doesn't? My dad's got four of them. Cats in the military, that's what it is. Yeah. Cats that have fought in the military. Yeah, see right there. That's uh, that's one of the special things about the states, ladies and gentlemen. They have cats in the military. Yes, we cats, do. Man. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm a born American myself. I'm from uh, born in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. Cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, um, so really though, I mean, um, being uh, being a, the band that you are, I mean, uh, one question comes out: Do you ever get any hostility um, from a- anyone? Like, I know that with the band, there's. Like uh, certain symbols used, you know, um, throughout the artwork. Do you ever get people who uh, might actually uh, come up to you and say, "Why do you use those?" Like as far as like the religious aspect of it. Yeah. Uh, only in Mississippi, I think we were rec- we uh, we <laughs> we received some flack because we were playing this bar that was right across the street from a church. Oh yeah. And they just put goat W. <laughs> And the, there's like a, a Protestant church across the street, so they couldn't really uh, advertise. Yeah, it otherwise it might be a bit of a war. But I think uh, there was a couple of vagrants that, after the show, went and uh, showed the church was false. But anyway, too much talking. <laughs> Oh, well, we got the same thing over here, actually. The man, we got uh, a venue down the road called the Manchester Academy, opposite from a big church. And um, sometimes you kind of wonder if, if there'll be um, a moment, one of those moments that'll come out and just, with all the garments on and thinking, uh, be gone, be gone, or some shit like that, exorcism shit. I, I think, uh, you know, Varg proved that a long time ago from Burzum, you know. And yeah. They, you know, it, that kind of is a lasting impression. But, I mean, uh, he took it to the extreme, you know, I'm 43 years old. I am way too old to be causing violence amongst Christians unless they get in my face. But hey. well, you bring violence on stage with some aggressive riffs, so that's as like, close as you can get. And also a weapon like guitar, which looks badass in many ways possible. As it should be. Actions speak louder than words. Exactly, exactly. So, um, have, during the time that you've been a band as well, have you noticed that there's been uh, any younger fans? I mean, uh, like, for example, you'll have your older fans who are fans from Acid Bath and also from uh, Soil and Green on both yours and also Ben's part. But have you noticed people who have come up to you in the younger generation? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's been growing more and more every day, which is fucking insane, you know. That's awesome. Which, you know, it's it's kind of crazy to talk about, but it's like, you know, me and Ben have been doing this for a long fucking time, you know. Oh, I know. But still, you know, you, <clears throat> when you play anywhere, it's still, I guess it's still, uh, I guess I'm still fresh. Well, still my, my, I'm not fresh, but my music's still fresh, I guess you could say. <laughs> you know, it's kind of weird. When I when I realized that you were from uh, Asbeth, I'm thinking, I recognize you, but we're not with hair. <laughs> <laughs> that was a long time ago. I wanted to see what was left on my head. 
Okay, so now it's time for a random question I ask to a lot of people just to see their reactions. This is a, a scenario question, like for example, if you're both trapped on a desert island and you're only allowed one item and one item of food, what would it be and why? One item, like one like item of food. Yeah, be, yeah. I would like a spear and a bag of shrimp. Bag of shrimp. Because nice. a spear, you could go on the desert island, you could swim around, spear fucking fish, spear fucking lobsters. You know, live off the land. Yeah. Wait, wait. Let me take it back. And another thing would be a, a self light lighter. Oh yeah, like oh. you start fires. Yeah, like one of those wand ones. Yeah, 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 exactly. There you go, and uh, you? Uh, maybe like a, a, a carton of flares so I could uh, try get to... Get the fuck get out of no, 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 you're, no, you're not allowed to have anything oh, like you, that. Yeah, you said I'm allowed to have I, I know, but, I, I, Okay, but, but it's too easy, wouldn't you say? I, didn't want, I, want, I don't want one flare, I want a carton of them. Okay, a carton of flare, okay, go on. Yeah, and then maybe a... Uh, a CB radio here. or something so I can communicate with the nearest boat nearby and get the fuck off the island. Well, there you go, really. And uh, finally, do you have any words for the fans listening at home? Nope, I don't. <laughs> Keep listening. There you go. Keep listening and uh, come check us out on this tour if you can. Uh, we'll be on the road for the most of the foreseeable future. And that goes to people in the States as well. Thank you very much. So, this is Michael J. Coyle, and thank you for listening.